doing speaker pose. I'm not going to be here. I'm over there. Yeah. Please, please, two. Thank you. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Doesn't he look good? Man, he's just sharp over there. I haven't. I got you there. Hey, stranger. I gotta talk to you. Oh my God. I'm worried about you. You really are. I talk to her all the time, and she says you're such a wonderful husband. <laughs> That's bull. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Is this on? Oh, no. Uh, Mics are on. Okay. Um, I'm calling to order a meeting of the Planning and Economic Development Committee on Tuesday, September 17th, 2019 at 7.05 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. And if the clerk would please call the roll. Alderman Lowe? Aye. 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 Aye.
Alderman Mary Ann Lamise Nagoya. Present. Alderman at large David Tenza. Present. Alderman at large Brandon Laws. Here. Alderman Jan Schmidt. Alderman Ernest Jetty is not in attendance. He is excused. And also in attendance, we have um, Alderwoman Wilshire, Alderman Gidge, and Director Cummings. And we have additional guests doing the presentation on the Performing Arts Center, and I will have Director Cummings introduce them when, we, when they come to the horseshoe. Public, public comment? None? Okay, so um, this evening we have a presentation for the design concept plans for the Performing Arts Center with Ned Collier from Icon Architecture and Director Cummings. So if you would like to come join us, um, Ned, you and Tim can take those. Great. <coughs> And Madam Chair, for the record, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development, and I have with me uh, Ned Collier of uh, Icon Architecture. And we're here before you this evening to ask for this uh, group's uh, uh, confirmation on the design of the Performing Arts Center uh, to be located at 201 Main Street. This um, um, design came about over, I would say, a six-month period where over 20 meetings were held. Uh, with various stakeholders um, uh, contributing to the process. Um, there, um, all the meetings were public and you weren't necessarily needing to be a member of the committee to contribute your thoughts and ideas. So what you have before you is really a community-driven uh, design process. And we're really proud of, of what you'll see this evening. Um, I will also say that the group, uh, the steering committee, um, voted this design um, in June and then reaffirmed that decision in July. And, uh, and with that being said, I'll hand it over to Ned to, to walk you through this evening's presentation. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Nice to see you all. Have good, uh, good evening. Um, I, I'm not sure of the formality of this. I'm used to saying if you have questions, please be free and interrupt. And uh, if as, that's what you're comfortable with, then... I will say to the members of the committee, just um, let Fine. me know you have a question and we will interrupt Great. at will. Great, yeah, <laughs> at yeah. I, I, um, it's much, much, a much better presentation that way than me just standing, uh, sitting here and, and uh, talking for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, as Tim said, we've been working for at least six months uh, on developing the design for the propo proposed f uh, Performing Arts Center. Uh, we have a, um, a really great sub-consulting team uh, working for ICON, including our, our partner theater designer, uh, OTJ Architects, um, who you see at the, at the bottom of the screen, uh, as well as some uh, really incredible specialists, um, Fisher Dax Associates uh, doing theater planning, Ascentec is handling the theater acoustics and uh, uh, audiovisual systems. Um, Fisher Dax is handling the theatrical lighting. Um, so it's a it's a, a highly skilled uh, team working working on your project. Ned, if I may interrupt, just to introduce Alderman Jetty, who's just joined us. He's also a member of this committee. Great. Just Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, so I think everybody's familiar with uh, with the site. Uh, we have this up here mainly to point out that the, we're really dealing with a, a, a three-sided project, uh, Main Street being the the principal frontage, but but to some degree equally West West Pearl Street, uh, as well as the pedestrian passage uh, that connects back to the the parking garage. Uh, and I and I bring this up because the the design for the project is very much focused on urban planning and responding to the, the urban context in, in which we're working in terms of how the building is accessed, how you see in or out of the building, uh, and uh, how the life of the building, so to speak, is displayed uh, to, the, to the city proper. So 
it, it's almost impossible to give a history uh, of the <laughs> past six months, um, but we we did start uh, in the in the upper left corner. That's actually the uh, uh, theater comparison that we showed in the interview, uh, where we were talking about being able to do a, a, a more traditional um, theatrical section, uh, although with a flat floor and a, a, a fixed balcony. Um, that's still very much true to this day, although there have been some adjustments um, largely having to do with controlling the costs. Um, the second image, we, we started off the process with Fisher Dax leading uh, an in-depth um, building programming process, coming up with an architectural space program. Uh, and once that was complete and signed off on, we started looking at various uh, massing studies and the next two, the next row after that are all uh, just examples of a, a series of uh, iterations that we went through before the uh, uh, current scheme was, was hit on, which is really the kind of last two images in the, in the second row, which was a, a concept of a, a large kind of portal or window overlooking Main Street. Uh, and having a, a, uh, a secondary relationship to West Pearl Street. Uh, the lower left image uh, is the, the section at the time we completed schematic design. Uh, that, that was the uh, proposal where we had the fly loft inserted into the apartment building, uh, which subsequently proved not to be um, financially achievable. Uh, or necessarily the best investment um, for the for the city, uh, given the nature of the the venue and uh, things that are going to be presented. So we went through a uh, reassessment of the scheme to reduce the costs. Uh, we actually rotated the theater 90 degrees um, so that the the uh, uh, stage actually backs up to the the surf. Uh, and one of the things that we realized in the process is that by preserving more of the apartment building, uh, you could actually build more square footage. Um, so there's actually considerably greater amount of public space in the current scheme than there was in the uh, original original concept. Um, and then finally, in the in the lower right corner, that's probably an image most everybody's seen that was produced. Uh, uh, post the schematic design uh, submission uh, and is the last iteration I think that was that was seen publicly so is there any, any, any questions about the process that was um, incredibly abbreviated <laughs> so um, but it's it's been a long and detailed process uh, with a, a lot of uh, involvement and and I would just say to that point in terms of a lot of involvement and to Director Cummings' um, opening comments, um, Rich Lannon is chairing the committee and um, Tracy Hall is the co-chair of the committee. And I would say that there have been a number of people who are not on the committee who have come and have felt very comfortable and welcomed in participating. So. Um, thank you to Rich and Tracy, and also just for the whole process and, and having it feel like a community conversation. Um, so thank you. So this, this is just to give you a, a, a quick preview of, of where we're going this evening. Uh, so the, the image on the left is where we were at the schematic design phase of the project, and the image on the right is where we currently are. So even though the, the, the theater footprint rotated 90 degrees, the exterior stayed um, pretty true to the uh, um, concept that was uh, signed off on by the, by the uh, committee. And I'll, I'll delve into this in, in more detail as, as we go through. So a couple of things. One, if you're if you're not familiar with reading floor plans, and I gloss over something that you're curious about, please say something, and and I'll I'll back up and try and explain it better. Um, what you're looking at here is West Pearl Street at the top of the of the drawing, which is what we would call um, uh, 
drawing north. Um, it's actually slightly west of north. Uh, and then Main Street is on the, on the right side. The surf is at the bottom of the image, and the pedestrian um, passage is on the left side of the image. So the, 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 the audience chamber itself, the footprint of the audience chamber, and the lobby that wraps around it, the stage, box office, Main Street entrance, are all on the footprint of uh, Alex Shoe Store. Um, we're maintaining the foundations of that, but it was determined it was more economic to build new on top of those foundations. Um, and part of the reason we've retained the foundations is they're, they're also holding back the road, uh, so to speak. So by retaining those foundations, there are significant savings in, in the construction costs. Um, and then in the apartment building on the left side of the image, we have a, uh, a, a second main entrance. Uh, and those, the, the, the West Pearl Street entrance and the Main Street entrance are connected by uh, a gallery that runs the length of the building. And we'll have some images of that later, later on. <clears throat> the idea is to really have the, the uh, um, audience, the people coming and, and visiting the building or if there are conferences going on, really activating the West Pearl Street edge. Um, it's continuous glass for the entire, entire length uh, of, of that side of the building. The, the balance of the apartment building footprint is what we would call um, back of house spaces. It's the public toilet rooms of which we have uh, a, a, a plethora uh, of, <laughs> of uh, women's toilets <laughs> and, and a code compliant number of men's toilets. Sorry, <laughs> sorry gentlemen. Uh, as well as the two star dressing rooms, a freight elevator, uh, a catering prep area, which has direct access into the audience chamber. Uh, if you're not familiar with the concept that we're pursuing, we're, we're proposing installing telescopic seating so that the tiered seating of the audience chamber can be retracted against the back wall of the chamber, producing a large flat floor for banquet events, conferences, uh, and, and uh, uh, the large general admission um, uh, performances. Um, there are two sound and light locks uh, off the, the gallery, uh, one at the Main Street lobby, the other at the West Pearl Street lobby that give access to the audience chamber. Um, we are considering probably as an alternate, um, meaning it won't be in the base cost, but we'll get a price for it, um, putting in what's called a skyfold door between the Main Street lobby and the chamber um, to increase access and flexibility um, to, to that space. I see, I was just on the mouse. So that's, that is this. You can't. You can't have the control, Tim. I guess so. not. <laughs> That's this area right here that was that, that, that was just referencing. So yeah. it would make a very nice, smooth, seamless transition, and it would make this space uh, a, a lot more functional. Yeah. Okay. So if you had a banquet, you know, you're not concerned about acoustic separation, you could open that up, and people could freely flow um, in between. So cocktails in the main lobby. Cocktails right. in the main lobby. Yep. The, uh, Mania, yeah. Presidential fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Alderman Jenny and then Alderman the, Ten. The term you used was Skyfold. Skyfold is a brand, um, and oh. we, we bring it up specifically because the technology they use is a double wall, um, so it's acoustically uh, very high performance, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and it folds up flat into the ceiling. Oh. So there are no there are no tracks or anything mm -hmm. uh, associated with it. Um, so if there were a performance going on and noise in the lobby, it would be blocked out. Correct. Okay. Yeah, Thank and you. We, we've run that by the acoustician and the theatrical planner. And and generally speaking, when a when a performance is going on, the lobby is actually quiet. Right. Um, and the lobby itself is helping to insulate the audience chamber from Main Street, Main Street. traffic. Right. So. Um, Alderman Tenza, yes. 
Thank you. Um, at, at one point, we had talked about um, retail space or maybe um, gallery space in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Is that still part of this, or is that not able to be accommodated? In so the, the the after having sort of looked at this more at an urban design level, the the decision was to rather than giving over space to retail functions, let this support the broader retail environment uh, of, of, of Nashua. It's, it's very active, it's thriving, uh, and, and as a kind of driver of economic development, it seemed more appropriate to dedicate the space to the Performing Arts Center rather than as a, a retail function. So that was the recommendation of the design team. Um, then the gallery. The gallery's gone through several iterations. So there, there are actually multiple places where you would be able to display um, things. We've, we've formally indicated the gallery as being at the top of the drawing here. It can't be secured. That's, that's the biggest issue. Um, and in this case, there's daylight accessing it. Um, an earlier iteration that had a, a, um, a, a gallery space in the basement level for a lot of reasons, we have actually more or less abandoned building anything in the basement. Um, the ceiling height is very low, uh, and the cost of fitting out the space was very high. Um, so you were spending a lot of money on some pretty poor quality um, space. So yes, gallery space, no, not secured gallery space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Alderman Tenza. Thank you. Um, the telescopic seating, mm -hmm. uh, will uh, the committee have options as to uh, comfortable seating? Mm -hmm. Yes. The telescopic seating? Yes. I know yeah. it's been a big, I know all the woman Klee has been beating that drum. Um, yeah, we, we're actually in the process of organizing having seats delivered to Nashua uh, <laughs> for, for um, test sits. Uh, uh, as one of my colleagues says. Uh, Excuse me, please come and join us. We'll let you know. I, I have a yeah. six and a nine-year-old, too, who would uh, gladly offer their opinions yeah. on what, what kind of uh, seating they would enjoy. So. If you can't make it to that, they'll be at my house afterwards. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are actually um, three different kind of seats that we're going to be looking at. The, the telescopic seating, uh, which is unique to the system, mm -hmm because uh, it needs to fold up and, and, and store. Uh, it's still, uh, you know, fully upholstered, flip, you know, um, traditional auditorium style seating. Then there is fixed auditorium seating on the parterre level, which is what we're looking at here, as well as on the balcony level. And then the galleries flanking the parterre will actually have loose seating um, so that the operator will be able to remove those chairs in the case of a, a general admissions. Uh, event. So here we are on the on the again the the parterre level, uh, essentially the lower balcony. Uh, on the main street side, there is a two story space that uh, overlooks the 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 lobby. Uh, at the top corner of the plan, where you see those sort of fingers pointing out of the of the plan, is that uh, big window that overlooks the the intersection. Uh, an interconnecting concourse to uh, what we're calling the parterre lobby in the second floor of the apartment building. That's where the first of two fixed concession stands uh, will be, and these will be fully outfitted uh, con concession stands, uh, as well as uh, they'll also have the ability to have mobile concession stands. So the, the downstairs lobby would have a mobile concession stand. Uh, as well as uh, the upper parts uh, of the building. So again, we've got uh, uh, another uh, floor of generous women's restrooms and code compliant men re men's restrooms, uh, something that, that we and the operator are calling the artist's lounge, uh, which uh, the other way to think of it is the, a, a green room um, for, for the, the performers uh, and in the, the lower uh, right corner, you're seeing uh, one of the intermediate landings of of uh, one of the two main stairs. So the upper left and the lower right are the two stairs, and the passenger elevator is more or less in the in the middle of the plan. 
Uh, moving up to the, the third floor, uh, there, there is no access to the theater proper at the, at the third floor. This is the uh, level that houses the um, proposed roof terrace, um, which will also be uh, an add alternate, additive alternate to the, to the uh, price of the project. It has the second of the two fixed concession areas um, the crew room, one of two uh, communal dressing rooms. Uh, and we're also retaining, uh, if you haven't been in the upper floors of the existing apartment, bu apartment building, there's a, a beautiful old stair uh, with a skylight over the top of it um, that we're uh, proposing retaining. So the, the floor and the, uh, the stair in the upper right corner, uh, upper left corner of the plan actually terminates at the third floor everyone would then transition to the existing stair and continue moving up to the, the fourth level. Um, so what you're seeing in the audience chamber is the lower level of the balcony and the um, uh, rigging wall and, and upper part of the uh, uh, stage proper. Uh, and then there's an AV room, uh, additional kind of tech rooms that support the, the theater itself. And then finally, uh, the, the balcony level of the plan, uh, you're looking simultaneously at the catwalks, um, which are what are uh, in the drawing below the, uh, uh, the balcony seating, uh, an upper level lobby with a mobile concession stand and a VIP room, uh, as well as the second of the two communal dressing rooms and the operator's um, suite. Of, of offices. Are there any questions on the basic program? No, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Jetty. Thank you. Um, so uh, do, do these plans uh, take into consideration and accommodate um, uh, you know, different types of performances where I, I noticed there's a star one and a star two room but uh, you know, if you have a, a larger cast or a chorus, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm. or musicians need to warm up and, mm -hmm. and uh, have a place to do that. Yeah. So the the two communal dressing rooms would accommodate uh, larger um, performance groups. Uh, the the um, uh, crew room is all of, all for the support tech staff who make the show happen behind the behind the scenes. And then the, the artist lounge is actually scaled for a, a, a large number of performers. Um, so yes, they're, it's, it's able to sort of expand and, and contract okay. um, and as needed. Jetty, I would just say, just to add, um, and Alderman Wilshire and, and Alderman um, Laws have been at these meetings also, um, our, our um, Operator Peter Lolly Spectacle Management um, has been very, very involved in in de the design of these spaces. And when we went from having um, the audience chamber parallel to Pearl Street and turning it the ninety degrees to be, I'm sorry, parallel with Main Street, um, one of the things all of us, not just Ned and his team, but all of us looked to Peter and his team to see what their thoughts were because of their expertise in dealing with um, a variety of facilities, a variety of um, performances, types of performances, and understanding what in today's business people are looking for. And um, so I think all of us felt very comfortable saying, well, wait, 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 Ned, we want to hear from Peter. Mm -hmm. And and Peter and his team have been involved right from the get-go with this. Alderman Cummings, or Ms. <laughs> Director Cummings, please join us. <laughs> Thank you. I actually uh, failed to mention earlier, and I apologize, but I did want to take a moment and acknowledge uh, Brandon from Spectacle Management is here this evening yeah. uh, as, as uh, part of the uh, Peter Lally's team uh, who would be the, the operator of the facility. And even though this is more of a design-related conversation, inevitably operation-type questions came up, and I appreciate him being here this evening. Yeah. And Brandon, I, do you have anything you would like to add? Um, 
Okay. Come sit up here. And Do, why don't you just come join us in case there's a question? <laughs> don't don't hide behind one of the chairs. Come join us, please. But again, it, Peter and Brandon um, at our meetings have been very helpful, and um, I think all of us who have been at those meetings realize that there have been lots of other conversations going on because as Ned and his team came in, there were references made to we discussed this, and Peter made references to, we've discussed this. So um, I I think we all shared your concern, like what's the space going to be, and um, and, and Peter and Brandon have um, really had a lot of input into not only this space, but even loading and unloading, and what does that look like, and how do we get people in and out of there? They're going to finish a show at 10. They want to be on the road by quarter of 11 because they got a five-hour drive or a six-hour drive. So all of that's been discussed and considered mm -hmm. as part of this design. Good. So Thank you. sorry to interrupt. Any other questions? Nope. Uh, so this, uh, uh, if, if, if plans are challenging for you to read, sections are probably impossible, but uh, <laughs> um, think of it as a loaf of bread. We're cutting right through the middle of the audience chamber uh, with West Pearl Street on the, on the left side of the image and the surf on the, on the right side. The stage immediately abuts the surf uh, <coughs> and uh, the retractable seating is that sort of lower um, series of tiers. Um, so that's what pulls back and tucks up tight uh, against the West Pearl Street side of the audience chamber. Uh, the parterre is at the very top of those uh, with the gallery beyond and the uh, fixed balcony uh, on, on top of that. Um, probably one of the most investigated uh, uh, aspects uh, that, that uh, the chairwoman was referring to is the, was the reduction in the height of the stage volume. Um, so in this case, rather than having a, a full fly loft um, for reasons having to do with the structure of the surf roof and, and abutting it with a, a taller uh, structure, uh, as well as financial, because I think this is, and in, in having Pete and Brandon to consult with has been invaluable for the entire program. But really, um, zooming in on the kind of performances that would be going on and understanding whether the value, the cost associated with a true fly loft uh, could, be, could be justified um, in the long run. And clearly, we collectively arrived at, at the conclusion that uh, the vast majority of anything that you would want to do in this theater could be accommodated uh, without without a true um, and very costly fly loft. Could I ask a yes, Alderman Jetty, in please. A fly loft is, is space where you know, drapes can be, curtains can be. It's literally that you can vertically move. Uh, okay. um, uh, uh, scenery. We've retained the wings. Um, you can equally horizontally move. Uh -huh. Scenery, so the the ability to sort of horizontally move and collapse scenery is completely possible, um, and and even in this, there is some degree of vertical, um, uh, not true flying, um, but but it could be done as well. Um, above there is a full rigging system uh, on the on the uh, top of the stage. So, um, Alderman Laws, I, I, I just. If you don't mind, thank you. If you don't mind me pointing out, so this is a major consideration during the committee because a lot of performances need fly space, but the size of the performances that would be coming to this venue aren't necessarily in the same scope. We're not going to be getting cats to come to Main Street Nashua. So a lot of the the theater, this, this, the groups that would be coming here are used to working in small spaces, and by design, this place because of Brandon, Pete, and Ned, and everybody else, it's, from what I understand, like artist first, going to be one of the most convenient places for them to load in, load out, set up. So all of that was a consideration. And I think everyone's pretty proud of the way that it came out. Any other questions, comments? Um, Alderman Jetty, yeah. 
So the uh, the balcony uh, is fixed. You say what holds it up? Uh, there are some very large trusses that are underneath that. There's a a uh, it's actually a a, a, a girder <laughs> running in the uh, north south direction. Off of which the the uh, rake is is cantilevered. It doesn't show in our drawings here. That's what that big thick black thing is. Um, okay. okay. Director Cummings, you have the mouse, right? Yep. Would you um, just because people are watching at home, and I don't know how these are coming out. So the main telescopic seating right there, then the parterre which is kind of, yes, those little boxes. If you don't know what you're looking at, it just looks like weird rectangles. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then the lower balcony and the upper balcony with the movable seating is kind of, again, those weird lines up on top, right? Uh, no, the, the balcony or, seating is all fixed. Okay, right where is the... Yeah. The okay. movable seating is the gallery, the... the, the um, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So these these are all the movable seats. Those are all movable. All, okay. all across here. The parterre is is here. These right. these are fixed. And then all of this telescopes back into a, a pocket. Under the parterre. Under the parterre level. Okay. Um, all right. Thank and you. And then what you're seeing up here are uh, acoustic reflectors. Okay. Um, up on top, and then this, these series of lines here are the catwalks okay. and the follow spot um, position. Um, the the uh, preference in, in contemporary theaters, particularly when there's a lot of uh, um, acoustic music performance, is for the, the um, mixing station. Right. Uh, I just flew it right out of my head. Um, it's positioned here, mm -hmm. right in the center of the, of the balcony. So they're able to really experience what the audience is, is experiencing. Right. Okay, thank you. So that's the that's the basic planning of the of the theater in, in two and three dimensions. Uh, I wanted to walk you through what our uh, <coughs> vision is for the exterior materials of it, and then we'll get to the the, the lighting and some we're starting to develop the interiors. Uh, at this point. Um, so I, I have to confess, we did move the traffic light pole um, about eight feet that way <laughs> for the rendering. Um, it's it's actually located about where that, that guy in uh, right. the blue. Uh, right. uh, I was going to guess the white. Yeah, well, it might be the white one, yeah, but it's, uh, the, the, it's, the it's about right there. The traffic yeah. light would be right about here. Uh, artistic license. So what um, you're telling us is we need to add that into the cost because no. it will look much nicer. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Actually, it's a, this, a static view is is uh, uh, we're purely doing it because we're looking at a fixed view. Oh, yeah. I, I just got hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you as you can see, we've really concentrated the windows down at the at the first floor uh, of the of the project. Um, all along Main Street, all along West Pearl Street, uh, uh, our views into the the lobby spaces and the and the gallery space. Uh, the the uh, materials we're thinking of, in addition to glass, are uh, a kind of concrete. If we can afford it, we'd do a, a, a granite facing uh, at the base. Um, we all live in a snowy climate. We don't want glass coming right down to the ground. We need something that's going to. Um, uh, uh, hold up to to shoveling and salt and things like that. So we've we've sort of lifted it off the ground a little bit. Um, the the white box with the big yellow, um, what we think of as a kind of architectural proscenium uh, for for the uh, audience to be on display in, uh, is a metal panel surround. Um, so the white um, front with the kind of straight lines in it and the yellow color. Uh, would be would be a uh, painted metal panel. The side of the box we're imagining as a uh, um, a rock faced white brick, and there'll be samples of all of this as the as the project 
uh, progresses. Uh, and then there's a, a, a sort of long window that stretches the length of the, of the uh, parterre level concourse uh, on that side. Um, so moving up then, uh, the uh, terrace is a, a uh, projecting balcony, uh, which we're using to uh, spotlight the building signage, um, which is the kind of pale blue, what the building's ultimately named remains to be seen, but that's the, that's the place where we're imagining the, the um, uh, major building identifier uh, being located. Uh, the the main stair main street stair is on the far left. There's a box office window that you're seeing just abutting the the surf, uh, and then moving up further, that that top um, volume, which is enclosing the 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 top of the audience chamber, uh, we're proposing cladding in a um, polycarbonate panel, uh, which will then be internally illuminated. Um, to create a kind of lantern. It stepped back from, from Main Street uh, a fair distance uh, and uh, uh, more or less flush with the uh, 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 West Pearl Street side and the apartment building. There are a whole series of architectural alignments uh, that we've made both with the apartment building and with the surf in order to give it a, a nice solid uh, uh, urban uh, responsiveness. So there's a kind of cornice, which is really the balcony in this case, um, that happens to work out very nicely with the cornice line of the uh, of the surf building. And then we've we've pulled some of our sort of major uh, organizing lines um, from the the granite belt courses in the in the apartment building. Um, the colors along the bottom there. Um, we'll typically have a, a kind of broad palette of colors that we'll draw on. We won't necessarily use all of them, um, but in this case, there were questions coming up from earlier renderings as to what the palette might be, and this is this happens to be where we are uh, at this at this point in time. Uh, the colors that we're principally drawing on are the the two blues uh, that you see. The, there are two reds, one that's a kind of um, sienna, uh, the other's a little bit uh, more, more saturated, and then the, the orange and yellow um, family. That's all subject to development as the, the project goes forward. Um, but this was, this was unlike a sort of placeholder, this was a serious um, color proposal um, for, the, for the building. All of the uh, window frames and the, the belt courses we're imagining being in a kind of dark charcoal gray. So if you're looking straight on at the, at the uh, elevation, you just get a better sense of how the main stair kind of climbs up and uh, the, the, the way that the balcony aligns with, with the surf and the, that sort of architectural proscenium uh, as a sort of major destination within the within the building. Ned, I um, I'm channeling Alderman Dowd in his absence. Um, the the <laughs> section, um, the yellow and white section that's painted, the metal. Yes. What what is that like in terms of maintenance durability? Uh, it's highly it's highly durable. I mean, you'll see it on large high-rise buildings, and okay. and uh, um, it's it's a an aluminum composite panel. Okay. Uh, and the the paint is baked on. It's baked on. Okay. Baked on. All right. Thank yeah. you. Alderman Jetty. So th this uh, view, it, it looks like the uh, I forget what you call it the sky space the the place where the the audience chamber? No, the, no, uh, the, fly. the fly. Oh, the fly, fly loft. Yeah. It's hiding. It's hidden it looks behind like it's there. there. Yeah. No, it's it's actually you'll see in another view that that's really only the width of the stair. At that point. Oh, so if, if we were looking at it from the south, it when we be turn there. the corner, you'll see the you'll see the end of it. We've got renderings of it. Okay. So I would just comment on this. Um, Photo. One of the questions, or one photo um, rendering, one of the comments was, we want to 
not be traditional brick, but we don't want to lose some of that. And so in looking at this color palette, um, certainly the outside pops more than if it were all brick, but that inside those <coughs> colors um, kind of tie it together with what we already have on Main Street and, and the apartment building and some of the other buildings across the street. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's kind of the best of both worlds there. And we're still getting, so this is still brick where we have bought the surf Mm -hmm. You know, which is a, a, a kind of scaling issue, and then both sides of the of the uh, proscenium are, mm -hmm. are brick as as well. Then West Pearl Street, and and our entire goal was to create this uh, kind of processional. Uh, with the ability to kind of display things inside, in this case indicating some, you know, artwork, uh, and it ties together the Main Street ent entrance and the, the West Pearl Street entrance at the pedestrian passage. And the thinking is, uh, from the operator's point of view, that if you have your ticket, um, this would be the entrance that, you, that you're principally coming to from the garage. Um, uh, if you're, if you're Wanting a ticket because the box office is in the front here, you you would be more likely coming in the front. Obviously, if you hold a ticket, you can go in anywhere you want. But uh, uh, from a from a audience control point of view, they would view this as a kind of ticket holders' um, kind of privileged entrance, so to speak. And I would just comment also, um, um, Peter stated that that pedestrian passageway he's looking at, at that as like a, a nice little area to do some overflow of events, you know, if they're doing some pre-show or after show sort of thing and the weather's nice, looking at setting it up there and then being able to flow directly in and out of the theater. So um, he was he was very happy to have that space and wanted it maintained to be used as additional space for the Performing Arts Center. And I think with the with the old bank building across the way being a pretty opaque facade, having an, and West Pearl being a relatively narrow street, having this will really give you a sense of uh, much more space there. Um, And then the, the interior renderings are still sort of early days, um, so these are very much concepts. The upper left is looking at the Main Street lobby with the skyfold door open, so you're seeing somebody uh, up on stage, there are banquet tables um, inside, and uh, we've, you know, we're indicating some, some benches along the, the Main Street wall, some feature lighting in the, in the double height space. Uh, and then the, the thinking is on the um, ceilings will probably uh, expose the, the, the structure uh, and, and paint everything, either a very dark gray or, or, or black, um, something to complement the, the uh, um, window frames and, and uh, column enclosures. The, the image on the upper right is the, is the West Pearl Street gallery. Uh, that we're referring to with one of the two um, sound and light locks uh, on the on the left side of that image. Uh, the floor finish we're considering is polished concrete. Um, when you go into the audience chamber proper, um, the material palette gets richer uh, and and warmer. Uh, we're looking at a, a, um, a, a veneer panel. Uh, probably in the kind of maple or ash range that's subject to development as well. Uh, and the two views that you're seeing on the left are from the parterre level looking toward the stage with the seating, uh, with the retractable seating, uh, telescopic seating retracted. Uh, and the same thing on the right where you're standing on stage looking straight out at the, at the parterre and gallery seating and the, and the upper balcony above. So if you were having a a, a general admissions event, uh, the the parterre chairs would go away in this case, uh, and and you'd have um, standing room for the audience both on the main floor and uh, at the at the parterre level. Questions? 
Alderman Ten seconds. Can I just go back um, to the outside of the building? And uh, even earlier in your presentation, you had mentioned that the uh, balcony uh, was an add-on. The terrace. To the yep. terrace. Yeah. Um, and so would there be an additional cost to that that the committee would have to consider? Yes, so what we'll do is the way that we'll put the, the, the um, construction documents together, we will identify you know, things that the, that the committee or the city would like, but we don't feel fall within the available funds, could come to a donor, could come because we have a good bidding climate, good bidding climate um, so that the, the terrace would be one of those, uh, the um, vertical lift door, that we're referring to would be one of them. I think that's all we've identified yeah, so far. So far. Um, but you, you always want to, particularly in a publicly um, public building like this, you want to have a handful of those um, because if the if the price is coming low, you, you can grab mm -hmm. that. Or, or if I may not, yeah. or, or as you're going through construction and things are going well, you and you feel comfortable, you can release your contingency and possibly add in if it's still a, a good proper time for him to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be part of the base project. It would be in addition if otherwise. Oh. Uh, so the, oh, I'm sorry, mm, sorry. Alderman Tenza. And just, I apologize, just to follow up on that. If it's something that we're not able to do initially, is it something that could be added later on down the line if the committee That would be the goal for the terrace in particular. Okay. Um, something like the vertical lift door would be very difficult to do um, later. So that's a, a decision that would have to be made probably before construction commences. Okay. There's a lot more structure that goes into holding up a, a big wall like that. Any other questions before we move on? Yes, Alderman Gibbs. Yes, thank you. You're uh, you know Peter Ramsey from Manchester with the uh, Palace Theater? Has Peter seen any of this? Has he looked at any of it? Uh, after all, this is on paper. He's run something for 20 years. Could you think he could be help just to look at it, go over it? Director Cummings. Uh, that's that's a fair point, uh, Alderman Gidge. I, I'll be happy to to have him actually see the plans. I have not had a, a specific conversation with with Peter as of recently on the design, but I've had come many conversations with him over the last year or so um, about this, about the concept, about the the program, about developing the Performing Arts Center. And very early on, he was instrumental in helping shape this, I, this, I this project. I think Peter probably, because he was a representative and also on our committee when we were studying the arts, uh, and very, very important person. Uh, I do hope, because you know what happens, you, you make these things, and you wish you would have done this. Mm -hmm. You run something for 20 years, Peter would probably say, oh, please, Put something here because you're going to need it for some reason. Something little, not yep. nothing major. But thank you very much for taking my yep. question. Thank you. And, thank you. And if I may, um, <clears throat> Brandon, if I could just impose upon you. We see you weren't planning on joining That's us. Fine. That's what we're now. here for. Um, <laughs> Alderman Gidge, I don't know how familiar you are with spectacle management, um, who's going to be operating the theater, but. Um, maybe, Brandon, you could just, and for people also who are listening, because we've had a lot of conversation, but there are probably people who are like, who are these people? If you could maybe talk about the venues that you're managing and the types of shows and performances that you're booking and, and just, and how long you've been around and, and what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Um, in terms of full facility management, currently we're managing the Lowell Memorial Auditorium in Lowell. Uh, roughly a 2,800 seat auditorium. Uh, we have the complete day-to-day um, -day operations of that venue, everything from booking shows, selling tickets, marketing it, all the way down to actually cleaning the floors and locking up at the end of the night. Um, we also do promoting in other venues, such as Cary Hall in Lexington, which is a very similar building to what we're building in Nashua, um, Plymouth Memorial Hall in Plymouth, and we also do a couple shows at various venues across Cape Cod. Um, and those venues were typically more just showing up day of show. Um, we actually booked the shows sell the tickets and market, but we don't actually manage the facility. 
um, day to day in those venues. Um, our president, Peter Lally, has been at Lowell Memorial Auditorium since 1996, I believe, was when he started there. So he's been in the venue game consulting. Um, he's been involved with Tim at consulting on this project from the very beginning. Um, so our company has a, a deep history of managing facilities in Massachusetts, uh, and a couple of them have comparable buildings to this. And you're involved with the um, new um, performance space in Rockport, right? Correct. Yeah, we uh, book all the shows. You for that book venue. all the shows there. Yep. Okay. Yes. So, just just so you know what their history is, also because I don't. I think we always talk about the operator, but unless you're in those meetings, you no, don't I'm hear not, about I, it. I, I'm talking really also because we're talking about the physical right aspect of it. I think somebody who runs something like that physically wished he could have or would have. Right. And that's what I'm talking about as far as managing it and what, what goes in there. That's another that's another issue. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Director Cummings. I uh, think you could ask uh, uh, Brandon to just talk about some of the shows that you, that you bring in over the last year, different venues or over the last couple of years. Yeah, for sure. Um, our, we actually have the luxury of we have two full-time booking agents on our staff, which is something that many promoters don't have. Um, so they take a lot of time to sort of find the personality of the markets that we're in. Um, so in Lowell, we typically do a lot more, you know, Broadway, dance. Um, we've done some sort of classic rock. We're starting to build our country music base back up again. We've done boxing events there. Um, down in Plymouth, we do primarily classic rock and sort of yacht rock um, just based off the market. Uh, on Cape Cod, we do anything from the Vienna Boys Choir to, you know, political comedies to perform uh, Broadway performances. So we book a whole wide range and we continue to can evaluate what's out there on the market that possibly could come. You know, it could be things such as some of the reality TV stars are out live. That's become very popular these days. Some of the game shows are going live. Hmm. Uh, comedy, TED Talks. There's a innumerable things that are going out on the streets these days and we keep our eye on trying to book what fits the community and, and sort of constantly pushing that needle forward. Thank you. Yes. Alderman Gage. Uh, in the 70s, I owned a place called Barnaby's here in the city. It sat 500 people. Uh, so I kind of understand what you're saying, because we did every. You have to do everything yeah. if you want to survive. Absolutely. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, you have somebody I would certainly like to talk back and forth with. I may be helpful, because this is a market that, that's you're in New Hampshire. Yeah, for sure. You know, what works 10 feet away may not work here. So I might be of some service, possibly. Absolutely. But anyway, I certainly would like to talk to you. Yeah, we'd love and, that. Uh, I mean, as concert promoters, you can never have enough input from people on what actually works <laughs> in the uh, in the market. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Alderman Tenza. So can I just ask, looking at the um, places that you manage in, in Lowell and Lexington, in Plymouth, would would you say if, if someone wants to go on your website, I mean, the booking would be most similar to the theater in Lexington, since it'll, it'll be about similar sizes, or or could uh, we expect to see that and, would be and, a good starting point. I mean, it it's <laughs> sort of fits in that same peer category based off the capacity, um, so it's the same sort of categories in the market. But certainly, depending on what people in Nashville like, we can always kind of tailor that a little bit. But yes, that would be a good starting point to look at. Okay. Any other questions? I, I'm just going to make one other comment, and um, I've been to Cary Hall. I don't know if anyone else has, but um, when I went there, what struck me was um, the promotion of local businesses. And so when you walk in, um, there was a table with some brochures about local restaurants, a local um, bed and breakfast, and um, in talking with Peter, there's certainly that interest to get involved with the community locally and support the local businesses. So um, that was one thing that impressed me two years before we were even at this point of looking at an operator and, you know, not even thinking we would be at the point of looking for an operator for Performing Arts Center. Um, so I... I just want to you know, put that out there that um, you seem to be very involved in the community and supporting local businesses. So um, I anticipate that we'll continue here in terms of supporting restaurants and um, lodging within Absolutely. the city. Thank you.
Yeah, go ahead. Great. Well, we're ju just about done. So we're, we're down to the, 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 the pretty pictures. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, um, we just wanted to give you a, a handful of views uh, from around the, around the intersection. So here we're, we're, we're basically standing beside um, Fratello's with its sort of copper um, turret projecting, <laughs> projecting and looking straight down West Pearl Street. Moving to the other end of West Pearl Street. The sky was like this tonight. I promise yes, you. Yes, it, it was. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was. Um, and uh, so you get a sense of what the West Pearl Street uh, entrance uh, would would look like um, looking to the east. Uh, and then this is this is looking uh, up Main Street. So here's here's the question that you were asking about: uh, where is the where is the space of the fly loft? Um, so we're actually we're using the the main stair, the volume of the main stair to uh, screen the back of the building um, from from Main Street. Um, our our structural engineers gave us 15 feet of frontage for the surf roof. That's that's all we could do. We could come up against the surf um, for 15 feet, and then we had to pull back uh, away from it without. Um, creating uh, major structural issues, largely due to, uh, due to snow loading um, or, or drifting on, on the adjacent roofs. So that's, this is a little bit of architectural sleight of hand um, going on there. And the money shot, so. Any other questions? Comments? Thoughts? Director Cummings. So, um, so I'm here this evening to just make sure um, we have the support of, <coughs> of, of the Board of Aldermen and, and of this committee. Um, this has been uh, what I would like to, to say is a, a great representation of, of community input. This, this has really been designed based off of feedback from many different stakeholders and has been an evolving conversation. Um, and those meetings continue. We, we meet on Wednesday nights. Um, we're not meeting as regularly as, as we were, but they tend to be at 5 p.m. in room 208. Uh, all the meetings are public. I will be noticing them. And, and we try to encourage participation and cultivate an environment where there's a, a healthy exchange and dialogue. And it's really important because I think it's what's brought about the product that, that you see before you this evening. So um, we we have a lot uh, of work still to do, uh, but we're we're on uh, good stead. So hopefully, we've earned your your favorable support this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and why don't you stay here in the horseshoe for the rest of the meeting? Um, Alderman Jetty, and then Alderman Tenza. So uh, as we're looking at this uh, pretty picture, I notice. There are no telephone poles or wires. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. You must have been reading my thoughts. Is that thoughts. photoshopping or is that part of the plan? No, no. This, this, this model, computer, computer models are a misnomer. Computers don't build models. People do. Uh, and uh, that's just a level of detail that was um, convenient to leave out. Um, um, Director Cummings, you might you. want to address that. I, I will, yes, happily. Um, th thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so... Um, to answer your very specific question, Alderman Jetty, is to do this project, you don't necessarily need to move the utility poles. However, it is the recommendation of the design team, the strong recommendation of uh, the construction manager, um, and, and and also myself, that we do undertake a separate initiative to look at the streetscaping of of uh, West Pearl Street. Um, you know, we're making such a, a c incredible impact in community investment um, at this corner, um, and you don't want to disrupt the businesses all too often. It would only make sense that you you look to do it. Um, at around the same time for, for, for many reasons. Um, so, so we would suggest uh, a separate appropriation at some point to, to look at um, moving the, the, the utility poles over and doing some streetscaping on, on West Pearl Street. And Widening the sidewalk. The, um, the rendering does show a wider sidewalk. Yes, so, I, was, I yeah. was just going to mention that. I think one of the things we had talked about was a wider sidewalk. Yeah, right if you there. go back, oh, there. Yes. Right um, what were we looking at there for the sidewalk? So we would we would take out the the um, parallel parking on the opposite side opposite, of the street. Right. So it's the width of a parallel parking. 
About eight feet. About eight yeah. feet. Yeah. Um, and does and and the and this does this wall still pull back some, or is it right up to the line now? It is up to the line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So eight feet right there. Yeah. Um, right now you have, I would say five feet. If that. If that. Yeah. Um, so you're you're long overdue. I know from uh, an ADA compliance perspective that there's right. definitely going to be a time a time that that this is going to need to be addressed anyway. And while we're addressing this, and Alderman Tenza, just wave at me um, if I forget. Can we talk about the back of the building and poles and wires and mm -hmm. um, I don't think. I don't think we have anything, or do we? But yeah. I know there's been lots of conversation <laughs> that people it. have heard about um, with the poles and, you know, on the surf yep. parking lot side. So if you want, if you could address that. So ironically enough, I was with Eversource last week to actually have this very specific conversation because the, to move the poles, as we were discussing, along here you'd you'd move all the poles right here and west you'd, pearl and you'd move all the poles along here okay and you'd shift them now you'd shift them onto this side of the street and the, it would start right about here mm -hmm. and the poles would run and just so everyone knows the sidewalk is is much larger on this side right. of the street um, and you'd continue on to about here and then you'd switch back you continue on to about here, and then you switch back over right about here. So not quite to the back of the bank building. Um, yeah, I would say right to the back of the corner, right at the start of the okay, the parking the lot. The parking lot, and then you kind of switch over where this white car is. And okay, so like about where Stella. Yeah, is. it would it, where Stella's is is where you'd see the first pole kind okay. of come back right to about here. And and then I'm sorry, and then okay. I was just going to say back here because this is actually very concerning. Right. Um, there is a lot of activity going on right here where my where my mouse is hovering. This will all get removed and cleaned up. This is decades upon decades of um, infrastructure, and uh, some of that infrastructure <laughs> is obsolete. And so Eversource is going to take the opportunity to clean this all up, and they're going to move this over to. You now a lot of people don't realize this is a municipal public parking mm -hmm. lot right here. So we're going to shift some of it over to to this side of the road here and then put in a new utility pole right here, and then remove all the utility poles that were in through here, and then there will be one pole <coughs> right right there added okay. and, and brought in. And so this would all get cleaned up right on along in through here and create a much better urban environment for, for pedestrians. Okay. And um, at one point we had talked about, like, um, seems like so long ago, June, um, power to the corner of the parking garage. So if we needed to park a bus there. Yep. So, um, and again, I, I don't want to speak f f for Brandon per se, but the thought process would be is the tour bus. So this is the Elm Street garage right here. Um, you'd have right along here um, where the tour bus could stay for long periods of time and we would make sure that they would have access to electricity in through the Elm Street garage. It would free up this area here for use and it would also st still be very convenient for the, for the artists. Thank you. And, and I would just comment um, is, and reemphasize what Director Cummings said. Um, a lot of this cleaning up and, and just adding to the urban streetscape is something that would be outside of the actual Performing Arts Center. Um, and, and as you heard, there's going to be kind of that um, back, not on Main Street, but West Pearl Street side entrance, which um, obviously those of us who know that area, you're looking at doing some nice streetscaping from the parking garage through that little pedestrian way. So we've talked in the committee about that. And then, of course, um, Director Cummings, maybe you can help me with yep. the mouse, the parking lot that goes behind the bank and behind um, Martha's and connects across over to the um, the other parking garage in the city. And oh, is here, that yeah. something that we should also think about looking at 
um, helping people and just making that a more pleasant walk as you you come through there by the taxi stand and, and behind Martha's. So um, there is there is a bigger vision. Um, it also has a price tag. Gotcha. Um, and, and I think it's really important that we keep that vision even if we're funding it in stages. I think um, all of us understand that it's part of the whole experience downtown and that we need to look bigger than just a building and a front entrance and a back entrance and what's on that corner. Um, it really is more about that whole area around downtown. But those are things we've talked about. Alderman Jetty, Alderman Tenz has been waiting very patiently and then I'll come back to you. Thank you. Um, no, I mean, I, I just wanna say thank you, Madam Chairman. Chairman, Director Cummings, everyone else on the committee who's been doing the work. I know that we've had, we had uh, our initial thoughts on what this was going to be. Um, I think people have been flexible and come up with an even better plan. We I appreciate everyone's input, um, and I'm I'm very comfortable with the committee moving forward with this with this plan now. I mean, I think it's great. Um, my only. Um, I get so excited about this when we get these presentations. I wanted to construction to start right away. So <laughs> we um, all do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm hoping um, you know it gets going and we get this moving and everyone can can enjoy um, all the success of of all your labor. So thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman Jetty. Thank you. So I I just wanted to say that uh, when you were talking about you know cleaning up the uh, the utilities. Mm. I envisioned you're making them, uh, putting them out of sight, not changing them from one side of the road <coughs> to the other. I'm not sure what, what, what does that accomplish? You know, if they're still, if they're still hanging from poles, um, you know, I, I look at West Pearl Street, you know, and those beautiful uh, lamps, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I don't know, if artificial gas lamps, yeah, and, the ornamental lights, yeah. and it, um, it's such a pretty. Mm -hmm. Uh, view, and um, you know the you know the you know when you talk about long term vision, I I'm sure at some point th there were um, there were telephone poles and wires on Main Street that got buried at some cost, and um, and I'm wondering if uh, looking at the long range plan for the city, when you talk about this this investment that we're making on this corner, um, you know, it, if, if, if it wouldn't be a, a, a good investment to, um, to, to uh, you know, to put those utilities underground. I, I am going to um, shoot that to Director Cummings, but I think some cost is probably the important part of your comments. So, Director Cummings, since you've been in conversation yes. with Eversource. Uh, thank you. Um, some cost would be putting it lightly. Um, and I'm trying to deliver a project that is, um, you know, economical and, and as practical as possible. Um, I could absolutely obtain a quote to try to um, tuck the utilities underground to which would absolutely, with no question, create a, a better streetscape and one I would I would very much encourage. Um, I can tell you Eversource um, is reluctant and, and has some resistance to it. It becomes very much a maintenance challenge for them, um, so they shy away from it. Um, but then in addition to that, it is extraordinarily more expensive to, to pursue um, that initiative, and it would all be born on the on the city of Nashua. The ratepayers wouldn't would not be able to pick up that cost. So, in lieu of that, what we've discussed is reducing poles and strategically placing poles in certain areas that would be more appropriate for the pedestrian realm to create a a walkable environment and taking uh, into consideration people who do walk and uh, as well as other modes of transportation as well, bicycles and and scooters and 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 cars and whatnot, but it would be um, trying to create a more efficient type of environment, which um, is a, a more practical approach and one that I think we can afford. But if it is the desire of, the, of this body to, to have me pursue something else that's a little bit more robust, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to do it. But I just want to caution you, it would be, I think it will become very expensive very fast. 
Oh, Alderman Laws, I'm sorry. It's all right. I, uh, I had a dream one time that <laughs> we had reversed the direction <laughs> of traffic <laughs> on West Pearl and Factory Streets, thereby making it more efficient for people to get off of the Broad Street Parkway, say they're coming from out of town, and get to the Elm Street parking garage and walk to this Performing Arts Center. Those two ideas, while they work in conjunction with one another, are, are mutually exclusive. And were we, as a body, to decide that we wanted to increase traffic to downtown Nashua by altering the current traffic plan, I think that that may be something worth looking into exclusive of what's going on with the, the wiring related to the Performing Arts Center. Well, and, and I would agree with you that it is certainly part of downtown development that we have talked about, um, as well as facilitating economic development um, downtown. And Director Cummings? Yes, thank you. So uh, completely separate initiative and project uh, under my office's purview is to look at the one-way reversal. Um, I, I am going to say something with the caveat that this is preliminary data very early stage data. In fact, I'll probably regret saying what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> Turn off your mic. Uh, yeah, Turn it, off it your mic. It won't be the first time. That's, that's right. <laughs> uh, but we had VHB. Um, uh, VHB is a civil engineering firm. Study this very specific issue recently. And up until our most recent meeting, the initial thought process uh, was that if we were to reverse West Pearl Street, the volume of traffic would be so large, it would necessitate a triggering event where you'd need to reverse another street. The thought process was always that we would not be able to have East Pearl Street and West Pearl Street handle the load or volume of traffic throughput, as they say it, in this intersection. Um, and still maintain the same level of service. So to do that, it was always thought that we would, and it's it, you can't see it on this map, but you'd essentially have to switch um, Temple Street, and you'd move, in, and and then Temple Street would then allow a relief valve, if you will, to continue on through, and then you'd cross Main Street and go up. Uh, I believe it would be Franklin, um, mm -hmm. Franklin Street. Um, However, factory. I'm sorry, factory. Yeah, Thank you, factory, fa factory street. So, um, what's that? It was my dream. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, what what VHB just initially said, and they caveated it with, the more study is going to be necessary, but it appears that we could, at least initially, reverse just West West Pearl Street without needing to do any other type of triggering event, which means, to Alderman Laws's point. We could get people from uh, the Broad Street Parkway to the Pine Street Extension down Central Street, down Central Street, crossing um, uh, Walnut Street, and then entering West Pearl Street and having the cars go directly onto West Pearl Street without affecting this level of service. And so that's something that that we should do. What we will need to do at that point, though, is um, look at doing a major infrastructure an intersection upgrade of the intersection of Walnut and per and West Pearl Street. Um, it's not very clear yet whether a light is going to be necessary, but but it may be necessary. Um, and so that will be um, a significant infrastructure uh, project that would need to we would need to take on, but one that would um, maybe more appealing than doing all the other types of um, um, triggering events that, that, that would occur. Well, and by doing that, you would, um, if people are able to head east on West Pearl Street, they could then head south on Elm into the parking garage Correct. and access it without Correct. looping around. So they'd actually be able to easily access all of their parking as well as the other parking garage. Absolutely. That's right. It, for the Performing Arts Center, without question, the one-way reversal would help immensely because even doing drop-offs now, you'd be able to, you know, most people would be doing the drop-off on the passenger side, right. which which would be a much safer condition. So from a, from a Performing Arts Center perspective, it, it very much would 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 help. Um, however, you know there, that this is just one entity, one stakeholder that needs to be considered. Where where um, 
needing to have this conversation with, with the downtown at large. So with that being said, um, VHB just provided me with an additional scope of work, um, which they would have some of these community meetings to actually have this conversation um, and draw some, some, some designs uh, to, to help facilitate the conversation. And, uh, and I need to, you know, get that appropriated, but if, but if that's the pleasure of the body, that would be the next phase with that, uh, with that project. And I would think that, um, I'm looking at you, Rich, around the uh, microphone here, that, you know, certainly we would want to have conversation with you around the impact of that sort of um, change on development downtown. Because I also think some of those buildings, then it, it provides some options for them because there's an easier access in and out of that part of the city. Yep. So, interesting. Alderman Jetty. Um, I don't want to prolong the meeting if, if, uh, if, if you were nearing an end, but when, when you, you, know, you start talking about the one way. Uh, system and uh, you know the the uh, my office is on factory street right and uh, so uh, one of the things that we notice is that you know with, and, and I think that the traffic people say this that one-way streets increase speed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that um, one way to decrease speed is to have two-way streets um, yeah. and whether or not uh, consideration would be given to making uh, you know West Pearl and East Pearl two you know both two-way streets um, you know factory and temple for that matter mm -hmm. going back to two ways I, I, I know that former mayor Davidson is still around and uh, you know this you know he instituted or you know pushed to have the one-way system adopted and I'm sure that he had good reasons for it, but I, you know, I think it's worth taking another look at, um, because uh, I, I, I know that uh, people coming around the the Walnut Street Oval onto Factory Street, and um, you know, go go pretty fast, mm -hmm. and I, I, I um, and I, I, I know that a way of slowing that down would be to make make it two ways. Right. So. Right. Anyone else? Um, well, thank you very much. If you would just maybe stay here because we're going to then discuss the actual um, legislation before us related to this. So if there are questions, um, you can you can answer them. Um, communication, we have one communication from um, Director Cummings regarding um, review and approval of the design concept and it was referred to committee. And if there's no objection, I move to accept the communication and place it on file. Um, then um, I need a motion to recommend to the full board approval of the plan. I'll do so. Recommend we okay. to the full board of aldermen. We pr approve the design concept plans for the Performing Arts Center located at 201 Main Street. Okay, so you've all heard the motion by um, Alderman Schmidt. And before we go into further discussion about this, I just, um, <clears throat> I had someone ask me why we were talking about this. And so I pulled up the legislation, and it's R17-122. And under that um, A, the therefore be it resolved by the Board of Aldermen, City of Nashua, the um, Performing Arts Center Steering Committee be established as follows. And A is the committee, steering committee, shall be responsible for making recommendations to the mayor and the Board of Aldermen for the physical design planning and construction of a performing arts center located at 201 Main Street. Furthermore, the committee shall develop an operational and strategic plan for the performing arts center. So it is the piece about refer making a recommendation for the physical design planning and construction that we are here for this evening, just so 
folks are clear about why this is coming here this evening. Um, so that being said, um, you've heard the motion. We've had the presentation. Is there further discussion, additional questions, um, comments, or are you all ready to um, recommend that this just go to the full board and um, that's it. I, I just don't want to stop any conversation if anyone has something. Okay, I'm looking at my committee members. Um, Alderman Jetty, any further comments or? I'm trying to catch up with you. Um, oh. I'm not, I have no further comments at this okay. time. Okay, and, and of course, when this goes to the full board, there's certainly another opportunity to discuss this. Um, and there may be members of the board who are unable to come tonight who may have questions. When do the seating? When do the seats come in? It's going to be at least four more weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pin, well, to pin down the all right. I was going to say people may want to try out the seats, but this will go to the full board before the seats get here. So, okay. Um, so you've heard the motion by Alderman Schmidt to recommend that the full board of Alderman approve the design concept plans for the Performing Arts Center located at 201 Main Street. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and that motion carries. So this will be going to the full board next Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. So next week, um, unfinished business, we have none, new business, non-public comment. I see we have, yes, Mr. Schaefer, please. We're all set? Yeah, you're fine. Thank you so much. Safe travels back. Brandon, thank you. Yes, Mr. Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer, uh, 15 E Street. If you could just hold on for one second, Tim. Uh, okay. Just have a quick comment on this while I was looking at it, is that, um, I walk around the city a lot and people ask me, how do I get to here? How do I get to there? I was looking at the front rendering of this and you've got that big yellow rectangle, lit, I guess it's what I, at least how I see it. And, you know, I could say to someone else, go down that building, you know, that one with the yeah. yellow rectangle. <laughs> that's lit up. And it would work going down Main Street and it would work going from East Pearl going west. But if you reverse, Pearl Street coming the other way, you're not going to see that yellow rectangle. So I was just kind of wondering whether you could think about, no matter which direction it come from, something ought to be some kind of a landmark. So if somebody can say, just go down that way and you'll see it, kind of a thing. A sick go sign? That was one. And the other thing <laughs> I have, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And the other, there's one other comment, other thing is, I don't know if there are apartments across the streets from those. They're mostly probably office buildings. But if there are apartments, you may get wondering about how the lighting is going to be at night for some of those. That's yeah. really common. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Director Cummings, Mr. Schaefer's comments reminded me of something. I'm sorry. This, I, it, You should just be able to say yay, nay, I don't know. Um, where are we with um, signage downtown? I know Public Works was going to be putting that up as it worked for them. And where are we in terms of getting that up? Because... I know Downtown Improvements Committee paid for that a while ago. It's We're waiting for it. And, and it's ongoing in terms of it's being erected. So um, for those of you who don't know, the city undertook an initiative to implement a whole new wayfinding sign package. Um, it was uh, partially funded by the Downtown Improvement Committee and by, by the city through various sources of funds. And then to help save on costs, our, our, our DPW was doing the, the implementation. It started this um, past spring. We prioritized various differing pa uh, sign packages, no, most importantly, the uh, wayfinding and directional signage for parking. Um, all those signs have gone up and we actually have um, far surpassed our schedule. Um, Director Photo had said that it would take uh, a year or, or more to actually do the, do the installation. Um, and I think we'll have it actually all wrapped up in well under a year. So I think we're more than 50% of, of, of the way done, so. So by next summer you oh, anticipate abs we will be finished. Yep, no, no question. Okay. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, remarks by Alderman. No need for a non-public session. Do I have a motion? 
Alderman Laws. Motion to adjourn. Okay, Alderman Laws, motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned at 829. Thank you all very much.